Hi there, welcome once again. I'm Imran Gata and you're in the stream. Today, bridging the gap as Bangladesh celebrates its independence, we ask whether the women of this South Asian nation have achieved true equality. Our digital producer, Malika Bilal, is here, as always, looking out for all your live feedback. So tweet her your comments and questions with the hashtag AJStream or the hashtag Bangladesh. Welcome, Malika. Thanks, Imran. Back on the orange couch with her is Anushay Hussain, Bangladeshi author, blogger, and activist. Anushay, welcome back. Uh, great to have you with us to Thanks celebrate National me. Day. We're looking forward to your thoughts on women's issues in Bangladesh. Looking forward to sharing them with you. Well, great. Well, you can keep up uh, with the stream on Facebook. Take a look. Throughout the day, we're posting links there to web-only content and information about our future shows. Now, just go to facebook.com forward slash AJStream and like us. So here are some of the Twitter hashtags our community is following. Now, on March the 26th, 1971, Bangladesh seceded from Pakistan. In the 41 years since independence, the women's movement has been steadily gaining ground. The country now boasts a quota system that guarantees women's political involvement, laws to protect their rights, better employment opportunities, and government incentives to ensure that girls stay in school. Yet, despite these achievements, there are a few problems that persist. The government has launched awareness campaigns to educate people on the issues. Um, this video on sexual harassment, sometimes referred to as Eve teasing in Bangladesh, is part of a campaign. Have a look. Our name is Nurul Amin. Our four people who are going to be a kid, they are going to be a kid. When we are going to be a kid, we are going to be a kid. We are going to be a kid. We are going to be a kid. Why are we going to be a kid? What do we want to be a kid? What do we want to be a kid? এই ইফতিজিং আমাদের মেয়েগুলোর মনে পাথরের মতো বোঝা চাপিয়ে দেয় ওরা মাথা হেট করে স্কুলে যায় ভয় থাকে ফিরে আসে নির্যাতনের শিকার হয়ে একবার কল্পনা করেন তো এই সময় ওদের মনের অবস্থা কি হয় আমি খুবই সাধারণ একজন মানুষ আমার ক্ষমতার মধ্যে আমি চেষ্টা করি ছেলেগুলোকে বোঝাতে যেন আমার মেয়েগুলো মাথা উঁচু করে চলতে পারে আপনিও একটু চেষ্টা করে দেখুন সো দ্যাটস ওয়ান অফ দ্য गवर्नमेंट মিডিয়া ক্যাম্পেইনস টু ট্রাই টু ড্র অ্যাটেনশন টু দ্য ইস্যুস ফেসিং উইমেন ইন বাংলাদেশ ইভ টিজিং ইজ হ্যাজ ড্রিভেন আ নাম্বার অফ গার্লস টু অ্যাকচুয়ালি কমিট সুইসাইড এন্ড देयर আর অফ কোর্স আদার প্রবলেমস ডোমেস্টিক ভায়োলেন্স ইজ কমন ইনক্লুডিং ডাউরি रिलेटेड অ্যাটাকস acid burning and the practice of marrying off girls at a very young age or child brides. So is Bangladesh a shining example of female empowerment, if you look at the stuff I showed you earlier, or is true gender equality out of uh, many women's reach? Let's try to find out. Joining us via Skype from Dhaka to discuss this is Saira Rahman Khan. She is an associate professor at the School of Law in Brack University and an outspoken advocate for women's rights in Bangladesh. Um, and Wasfia Nasreen will be joining us in a moment or two as well, we hope. Uh, Saira, let's start with you. Do you think that it's a bittersweet National Day or a bittersweet birthday for the women of Bangladesh, given uh, the multitude of issues they, uh, they have to face? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I do believe that it is a bittersweet issue for women in Bangladesh. I mean, the, uh, for the last 40 years, there have been some positive changes for women's lives in the country. Um, they've received seats in the local government. The girl child enrollment in schools is uh, one of the highest in South Asia. There have been several laws that have been enacted to combat violence against women and punish the perpetrators. And also because of the rise of the garments manufacturing sector, women now have a choice of where they want to work and how they want to stay. But having said all that, um, violence against women is persistent in Bangladesh, especially the issues of domestic violence, acid violence and rape. 
Um, I think mainly because Bangladesh is, you have to know, is, it is a patriarchal society, and a lot of this stems from that issue. Okay, now joining us uh, as well is Wasfia Nasreen, the founder of Bangladesh on Seven Summits Foundation. She's planning to climb the highest peaks on all seven continents in celebration of women's achievements in Bangladesh. And she joins us from Lakla, Nepal, where she's preparing to mount, uh, to summit Mount Everest. Wasfia, uh, welcome uh, to the program. Nice to have you on as well. Using that summit theme, um, women have held power at the summit in Bangladesh, at the very top. But is that perhaps maybe just cosmetic? Is there equality at the very top, but no equality among the masses when it comes to women in Bangladesh? Uh, it's, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I think it's a tricky situation when you're talking about 160 million or 167 million people and coming from various social and cultural and, you know, religious and ethnic backgrounds. Um, I wouldn't say much on the government uh, power being held by women, but individually I think women of Bangladesh are really uh, coming in the forefront of uh, sports, education, security, everywhere uh, we're coming up, but it's coming from an individual effort. Anusha, what do you think of that? Uh, uh, Anu okay, let's ask Anusha what she thinks of that. Um, Wasfia is, is keen to show us that holistically women are rising up in Bangladesh. Is she right? I think that, you know, Bangladesh is always touted as a development star. You know, I think our maternal mortality reductions and I think our surface level, how we have progressed, um, are things definitely to be celebrated. You know, we've reduced our maternal mortality rates by about 40%. We're a huge success story in terms of population decline, in terms of allowing women to join the workforce in mass. But I really think that the issue of violence against women can really be used as um, an indicator for our overall position in society. And I think that that uh, public service announcement for Eve teasing, which is really sexual harassment, I, I have a serious problem mm. calling it Eve teasing. I feel like we're trying to make the situation sound better than it is. I feel like if we make strides towards women's education, women's empowerment, women's participation in society, but if they are being harassed on the street, to the point that they are killing themselves, mm. they're not able to go to school because they are scared. If we are um, allowing perpetrators of violence against women, situations like uh, acid burn victims, you can buy in a bucket of acid in Bangladesh in the, in the local market for 10 cents. So if we're disfiguring our women, if we're failing them at the level of basic security, ultimately this is going to affect um, their being able to participate in society, mm. uh, fully participate in their society. So I think we definitely have a lot to celebrate. We've, we've made significant strides, but we definitely have a long way to go. And um, security for women is not something that should be overlooked. Malika, you want to come in there with some of the feedback? Well, I think that the point that you just mentioned is one that's being raised by a community online. This is a tweet from Rezwan who says, in Bangladesh, laws are in place for protecting women from domestic and acid violence. Problem is lack of awareness and implementation. Saira, I'm going to pose the next tweet to you because on the back of that, um, this is something that Imran mentioned a little bit earlier, but Fatima Ansari on Twitter says, if there was gender discrimination, then why would Bangladesh elect a, a woman to be their prime minister? Um, and that for 16 years. So can you elaborate a little bit more on what we're seeing versus the, the, the political achievements that women in Bangladesh have made? Well, uh, one thing you have to understand that in Bangladesh, uh, these political uh, parties, they run on political dynasties. Um, our present prime minister is the daughter of the first prime minister of Bangladesh. The leader of the opposition is the wife of another president of the country. And it's this dynastical culture that um, politicians want to maintain. So yes, we do have women at the top. We have a woman leader of the opposition. We have a woman prime minister. And we should be proud of that fact. But if you look uh, at the grassroots level, it's a totally different picture. That's, that's fascinating because, uh, Anusha, would you agree with that? When you look at perhaps not just Bangladesh, but an entire South Asian dynamic, the Bhutos of Pakistan, the Gandhis of India. When a woman is politically powerful, it's often because she's the daughter of so-and-so or the wife of, of so-and-so. Yes, I would definitely agree with Sire. In fact, this is an issue I've written extensively on. Um, you know, when you look at these countries in the subcontinent, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, even Sri Lanka, you know, people are really amazed that we've managed to have 
female leadership at the very top, you know, uh, and not just for a couple of years, really for Bang in Bangladesh for the past almost two decades. But this really isn't a testament um, to women's rights or women's empowerment on the ground. In fact, I always say that sexism is systematized in every single country and in every single society. And how we've managed to do it back home, you know, back in the subcontinent, is through male links. One important male link, one important mm. powerful male association, if you're somebody's daughter, wife, sister, even widow, will open up doors for you that really remain shut for the mass um, mass majority of women in Bangladesh. I think, yes, Sheikh Hasina is prime minister. Before her, it was Khalid Zia. Before Khalid Zia, was Sheikh Hasina, one more time. But the relation between the power at the top and the power at the very bottom, how is that affecting um, a girl's ability to go to school in, let's say, the village of Borishal. So there's a huge disconnect. And I think in the West, it can be touted as massive gains for women uh, because, you know, female leadership, as we've seen, is something that America hasn't even managed to mm. do. But that's not really a testament to where we are in regards to women's rights. Well, whilst we had, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Malika. Sorry, uh, you yeah. mentioned uh, disconnect, and I just wanted to pick up on that really quickly because Shahana Sahidiki tweets, there's a huge class divide within the feminist movement. Yeah. Needs and rights are not necessarily the same. And Waspi, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe you can elaborate on, um, just within your own life, have you seen uh, disparities and, and have, have things been made easier for you versus um, other women that you've seen? Can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on um, what Shahana says is this class divide? Yes, I think uh, there's a huge difference in that and also I just would like to draw attention that everything is context specific for example a sex worker who works in a brothel faces different kind of a struggle than a sex worker who uh, works in the street and then in comparison to that a woman um, an indigenous woman who specifically say uh, who lives in CHG Chirong Hill Tracks where it's we it's an army occupied place faces a totally different kind of a struggle and um, on that level, you know, there's classes, there's uh, different contexts, so we all have to sort of be mindful of the different scenarios that are working in parallel. Okay, okay, fair enough. Let's ask Saira then, out of all of these issues in context, issues like property and inheritance rights, child marriage, um, employment inequality, violence, rape, sexual harassment, put all of these into a kind of social basket and contextualize them and understand the history and all of that, out of all of those, which do you think is the chief social issue facing Bangladeshi women and which should be tackled first and foremost? Oh my goodness. Um, for me, in, in, in my opinion, I basically think that Women, the reason why women are facing such problems is all these sectors, the civil sector, the political sector, and the economic sector. I think one of the basic reasons is because of the lack of access to justice. Um, as I said, we have numerous laws now protecting women, and women can seek uh, rights for property, they can go to court. There are laws governing these issues. But the problem is this discrimination, this lack of access to justice. So I re it's very difficult to pinpoint one specific issue. But because the women are not able to get relief from the courts for various reasons, especially in the case of violence against women, I think that's the main issue here. Okay. Uh, is, I mean, what do you think, Anusha? Do you think that uh, Saira has a point, that the courts are biased towards men, that... Uh, some Bangladeshis are more equal than others? I definitely agree. I think justice in Bangladesh, um, you know, uh, to a large degree can be bought. And I think that there's a huge issue of access. I mean, who is a being able to access these laws? Who is being able to access the courts, the systems, being able to afford even legal representation? We're still struggling with uh, mass illiteracy. So a lot of people, it's great that we have these laws, but a lot of people either don't know about them and can't access them. It's very interesting because in a country like America, uh, laws really mean something here and laws um, are implemented and they're powerful. But back home, we have such great laws for women, um, but you can access them and they're not implemented. So. Well, well, with Grameen Bank and, and finance, one of the issues was that many Bangladeshis, particularly women, didn't have access to banks and it fulfilled that need where they, they had access to microfinance. Um, is it possible to have a kind of microfinance equivalent of justice in Bangladesh? 
Yes, I guess we could, you know, I don't think anything is impossible, but I think the larger issue is uh, government efficiency, government uh, corruption, how they're being able to administer these laws, and there's no implementation. No one is held accountable. We, the corruption levels in Bangladesh are so, you know, off the charts that I think at the end of the day, everything really comes back to that. Do our laws really mean anything? Are people able to access them? Can grooming tackle this situation? I feel like our civil society um, does a lot more and is able to implement more than our, than our government is. But it's definitely, you know, maybe it's powerful, but we have a much larger issue of, of corruption to tackle before we get there. Well, in addition to government, I mean, government and laws, as, as important they, as they are, they can only go so far. Exactly. So um, um, there's a question here from Rahnuma Majid on Twitter, um, and I will direct this to you, Syra. The government needs to make it a bigger priority to protect its women, she says, and make it clear to men that punishment will be severe. So what are groups on the ground doing to uh, change the, the, the cultural um, and the societal uh, mindset? Uh, well, yes, it's, I, I totally agree with everything that's been said here. I mean, we have plenty of laws. There is an extreme lack of implementation, lack of knowledge of these laws, and also the fact that um, there is no victim and witness protection law in Bangladesh, so nobody has the... Uh, the courage to come forward and say, yes, I witnessed this rape happening or I witnessed this acid attack because they're scared of repercussions from the, uh, the families of the perpetrators. And um, NGOs, there are NGOs, plenty of NGOs in Bangladesh who are working on the uh, issue of women's rights. They are giving legal aid. They are um, monitoring uh, violence against women. They are even uh, holding mediations between families or between couples that are having dom uh, domestic problems. Um, another thing that um, uh, another NGO is doing is um, uh, training women to be uh, human rights defenders, giving them basic ideas about the laws, how to file a first information report in the court, uh, and things like this. And this organization is called Odhikar, and it's it's working in uh, several areas around Bangladesh to train women as human rights defenders. Anusha, for many people, you can't have justice in the present or the future if you don't have justice for the past. Now, on National Day, Independence Day, a lot of people look back at the issues surrounding 1971. In, in D.C., I, I saw a press release I was invited to a discussion regarding potential war crimes of 1971 and all these you know, open wounds mm -hmm. regarding the past 41 years ago. Um, is it of your opinion that women's role in, in the war for independence has not been recognized? I mean, there's some ridiculous figures, like 200,000 women being raped in 1971 as East Pakistan became Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, to what extent do you have to look to the past in order to fix the present and the future? I think you always have to look to your, uh, to your past. Um, but in regards to Bangladesh, and especially where we are today, 41 years of independence today, I think we have to look at the past because not only have women's role as uh, fighters and supporters of the war not been uh, recognized, but their sacrifice, the victims of, of 1971. I mean, the official figures are about 200,000 women have been raped. Uh, but really, a lot of sources put that in figure closer to 400,000 women that were raped, mass raped, put in, sold and forced into sexual slavery. Um, you know, my family, I'm from Bangladesh, and there's so many stories that my uncles and aunts uh, tell us about piles and piles of bodies of rape victims that you would, you know, find under the bridges and mass graves. And these are not only open wounds, but really it's been very recent that people have even been openly talking about uh, the atrocities and the rapes committed from the Pakistani soldiers on Bangladeshi women. Um, a lot of these women killed themselves, they killed their babies, and I think that, um, you know, as a result of pregnancy, obviously, from, from the rapes. and. I think that we're, we're starting to talk about it, but the War Crimes Tribunal, which was set up in Bangladesh last year, you know, we waited 40 years mm. for these War Crimes Tribunals to be set up. They're not addressing um, the mass rapes. This was uh, the Rome Statute after what happened in Bosnia has officially recognized rape as a war crime. But why is our War Crimes Tribunal not addressing the fact that so many of these women were raped? And a lot of these survivors, um, they're still alive today and they're speaking, but we must deliver them justice because this, again, will 
be a huge testament to women's overall position in society. If in the year 2012 we cannot give justice to these women, then where are we going moving forward? Well put. Well put. Malika? Um, there's a comment here. I'm shifting gears a little bit. Um, uh, this is from Mir Ahmed bin Qasim who says, Bangladesh women rights movement will have more acceptance if religion was not blamed for all abuses as done by some. And I know a religion, of course, comes into play um, as, as the reason for a lot of different um, um, societal problems. Um, Syra, can you speak to the role that religion plays in this and the role, uh, the effect maybe that religion could play in mitigating some of these abuses? Um, well, talking about religion is always a sensitive topic uh, in any country, and also in Bangladesh. Um, sometimes religion, uh, religious doctrines or religious practices are misused to perpetrate violence against women. Uh, one example is the uh, passing of um, illegal fatwas or religious, so-called religious decrees. And um, these are done by the mullah or the imam, the leader of the prayers in the local area or in the village. And um, what they do is that they give things like, you know, whippings, uh, punishments such as whipping or stoning. And this has also led to the death of several women in the past. Uh, but I think the general feeling in uh, rural Bangladesh is they have this fear of religion, and a lot of the times they do not challenge what uh, uh, the, the, the punishments that are, are given because they think that since they're coming from the mouth of a religious person, it should be this is what the religion is. Okay, so we're going to get uh, Anusha and, and Wasfia's comments and opinions on religion in, uh, in Bangladesh vis-a-vis -vis women. Uh, as well in the post show. Thank you all of you, Asfia, Saira and Anushay. Stay where you are. We'll continue talking about women's rights in Bangladesh in the post show. But first, here's Malika with some of the other story leads we're following. Kenya has struck oil for the first time in history, according to the president, and Kenyans have taken to the web to voice their excitement and concern. For a minute, Kenyans, we're united, tweets Gypsy Waiyaki, using the hashtag Turkana Oil. Well, the hashtag began trending shortly after the announcement that Anglo-Irish Tulo Oil discovered black gold in the Turkana region. But not everyone is thrilled. Turkana Oil can build up Kenya's economy only if foreigners don't come in to exploit it and the corruption doesn't ruin it, tweets Desne. While Lynette Muende writes, seriously hoping that the Turkana Oil doesn't tear our nation apart. Well, staying in Kenya, our next leads out of the capital, where Twitter user Sasha Kinney brought our attention to a graffiti campaign bearing political messages on the walls of Nairobi. Describe your MP, reads one graffiti mural, with the words greedy, selfish, unreliable, and vultures below it. Authorities soon covered over the mural, but activists like Boniface Mwangi, one of the artists behind the graffiti movement, remains undeterred. He tweets, our ways may not be perfect or please everyone, but we are doing something to make things better because Kenya is our home. Our next lead takes a look at a spoof on a recent Israeli army, video, army campaign video that invites netizens to like the military on Facebook. Twitter user Sam P re-edited the video to show the military in action with clips of Israeli soldiers shooting, beating, and clashing with Palestinians. Well, tell us what you think of those stories by voting them up or down at stream.aljazeera.com slash leads. Imran? Yes, thanks for that, uh, Malika. Do stay with us. The post show is next at stream.aljazeera.com. I'm following two hashtags there, the hashtag AJStream and the hashtag Bangladesh as you continue to add to the conversation regarding women in Bangladesh on the 41st anniversary of independence. It's Bangladeshi. National Day. Our three guests are still standing by, so join us on stream.aljazeera.com for the post show. Now, on Tuesday's show, following the killing of black teen Trayvon Martin, we look at what many deem as institutional and systemic racism in the United States. It's created a firestorm online. It's really a hot potato, and we're definitely looking forward to uh, your thoughts and comments on that. Send us your comments using the hashtag AJStream or lengthier comments if you like on Facebook, as well as video comments on stream.aljazeera.com. Until then, see you online.
Welcome back to the post show on stream.aljazeera.com. We continue our discussion regarding uh, women in Bangladesh, 41 years after um, independence. Anushay Saira had you know, answered the question regarding religion in, in, in Bangladesh. She said that many people fear religious authority. Um, I mean, I wonder, a lot of the time, people attribute social problems um, as they affect women, either through the lens of saying this is South Asian patriarchal culture, mm -hmm. or saying that perhaps this is chauvinistic Bangladeshi interpretation of Islam, which is keeping you know women down. Is it a mixture of both, which or, or one or the other? I think it's really interesting that you brought that up because I think a lot of times we excuse um, violence against women, and we excuse a lot of kind of violence in our society by saying that by labeling them as cultural. And I really liked a couple of years ago when she was speaking about, um, of course, women's rights in Afghanistan, what was happening to women there. Hillary Clinton said that we need to start calling these crimes out for what they are, not cultural, but criminal. And I think, you know, what Zaira said, and I, and I completely agree with that, outside of the capital and in our rural areas, and Bangladesh is, of course, you know, largely rural, uh, not only is there a fear of religious authority, but a serious abuse of religious authority, especially by these local uh, elders and village councils that have, uh, you know, no legal basis. And last year, a girl named Hena Begum, she was 14 years old, was raped, I believe, by her neighbor. And then the local um, village council um, sentenced her to be lashed. I think she received 40 or somewhat lashes, and she died from her wounds. So we have a rape victim who was lashed to death uh, based on these religious, uh, they issued a, a legal fatwa against her. And fatwas, by the way, in Bangladesh, I think last year or the year before, were officially declared as illegal. But this fatwa claimed this girl's life last year. Her, the man that raped her didn't get anything, but this girl was raped, and she eventually died uh, from her wounds. So I think, uh, we need to stop blaming culture. It's not culture. These are crimes, and we have to um, find justice somehow. Anusha says we need to stop blaming culture. Wasfia, what do you think? Is that the right approach? I'm sorry, you, I cut you off for the last second. Could you repeat that, please? Anusha says that um, Bangladeshis need to stop blaming culture as the root of many crimes against women and these things should be criminalized and they need to be called you know what they are what do you think yeah i agree i mean uh, to a certain extent um, but uh, there's there is cultural impunity that goes on um from my experience um, um i apologize because um, i couldn't hear you guys for two seconds over there and i missed a bit a little bit but um, as I was saying, that the indigenous population, and because the religion is different than the dominant uh, population, um, Islam, um, they, for example, they live in a place where if they get raped, um, they're first, um, you know, scared to even make a complaint because um, the military is all over, and then they have to ver be verified by a government personnel to prove that they have been raped. And um, I. I'm enforcing on this because um, after the peace accord was signed, um, the situation has escalated so much. Even yesterday, a 14-year-old Marmar girl um, got raped by two Bengali settlers, and you know these kind of news doesn't even get highlighted uh, at all, and in the national news or anything. Um, and it keeps happening and gets uh, forgotten uh, over the week. Um, and so. Um, I think our, we have a huge country mm. with a lot of population and um, different scenarios going on at different levels. Um, so it's not easy to generalize and to make a comment on it. I agree with what Wasfia was saying, of course, that our culture definitely plays um, a role in believing that you can um, do certain things to women, and I think that we have a culture that allows it and perpetuates it. My issue is making sure that we don't excuse it just right. because it's a part of our culture. Yes, it's a patriarchal society. Yes, we have a lot of things that we allow to happen. Look at the issue of honor killings in the Middle East. Look at acid burning violence in the subcontinent. So yes, it's a part of our culture, but that doesn't make it okay. Hmm. 
Uh, Malika, you want to come in there? Yeah, exactly. Just on that note, this is echoing um, your, your sentiments um, from a member of our community, Shahana, who we read earlier. Um, domestic violence is widely accepted despite fantastic laws against heinous acts. Gender parity is a state of mind, not just laws. Um, but now I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. Um, we posed a question uh, to our members uh, uh, online um, asking, have the women of Bangladesh succeeded in bridging the gender divide? Syra, um, one person wrote back saying, if you consider women empowerment, then it's a big no. Industries fully exploit women's cheap labor by letting them work. Um, can I get your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a true comment. I mean, as I said, uh, women suffer from socioeconomic discrimination, even though our constitution says that there should be equality in all spheres of public life. Um, in, in, the, in the tea gardens, the tea garden workers, the women workers, in the garment sector, I mean, women are discriminated. And not only that, uh, apart from the very bad, and very poor pay they're getting, they're also sexually abused, harassed, um, raped. So, yes, they do get the short end of the stick there. Anusha, a common theme throughout this entire discussion seems to me to be, um, well, at the nexus of, of all these myriad issues, facing women in Bangladesh seems to be the issue of education, particularly education of their own rights, which, as far as I understand from, from listening to all of you, uh, the laws do exist to protect women in Bangladesh, but many women don't know that these laws are out there and they don't feel confident, even if they do, mm -hmm. that these laws could do anything mm -hmm. for them. So is education then perhaps the overarching you know, priority for not only the government, but for people from the grassroots up then? Yes, but I think, I mean, of course it is, and education is always really important for the progress, you know, for a society to progress in general. But I also think education is kind of also touted as, okay, we need more education, and that's the end of it. We need more. We need a change in our mindset. We need a change in our attitude. Um, what's happening a lot now is that we have really educated women, but what are they being able to join the workforce? But they are I'm talking about also educating men about you know, the rights yes. of women. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but even if they're aware of them and educated about yeah. women's rights, will they accept them? Will it be okay if we're equal mm. partners in the playing field? So it's a cultural shift and a mental shift. We can, men, men don't always need to be educated. I think they're aware. <laughs> it's about being able to participate on an equal uh, playing field with them. Okay, I'm gonna allow Wasfia the final word on the program. Wasfia? Mm. No, I totally agree with what Anisha just said. Um, I'll just add that, you know, with education, also the choice to make, um, you know, education has come with um, consciousness as well. Like, not just fix education, you know, you go to a high school. Uh, women have to be given the freedom to choose their path, and uh, that's, that's so that they can choose their own um, destination. And that's, that's not common, and that's where we have to work for. Well, Asfia, best of luck with, with your climb. Your climb. Yeah, we're looking forward to <laughs> hearing Thank <good> you. news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need that. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thanks for joining Stay us. Stay safe, Wasfia. Good luck. Yes, best of luck uh, once again. Thank Sarah, you. Sarah Thank Rahman Khan, okay. thank you very much for joining us uh, via Skype. It's been fascinating. Good to pick your brain and, and listen to your expertise. Oh, thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for inviting me. We've really enjoyed it. Anusha, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and uh, thanks for soldiering uh, through some audio problems that you were having earlier. <laughs> yes, it was quite terrifying. Yeah, so apologies uh, <laughs> for that. I hope we played it off. The if curse. anybody saw my eyes bulging out on screen, it yeah. was fear. <laughs> Not fear of me, though. Fear of silence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malika, we'll see you tomorrow when we discuss uh, Trayvon Martin. Really looking forward to that discussion. Thanks for joining us. We'll uh, see you on Tuesday. Keep joining us on stream.aljazeera.com. Bye-bye.